hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the Poppy War by R.F. Clark. And I'm just going to be pretty upfront. Even if I include last year, this is one of the uh, worst books I have read in the last uh, year, including 2020. I hated just about everything about this book, including the main character, the really poorly done setting, the plot, just just pretty much everything. So I'm going to talk first in a non-spoiler fashion. Uh, I will be getting into some spoilers for more specific things, because uh, there's just so much to talk about. But I was really blindsided by this. I'd heard pretty much nothing but good things about this book. I knew it was very popular. It's a trilogy that's remained pretty popular. And it, for the first chapter, seemed like it was starting strong. So let me break down uh, where my issues come in for The Poppy War. So the first thing is, in general, uh, The Poppy War is about Rin. And Rin is a war orphan. She was adopted. The people who adopted her really don't care about her. They just kind of use her as free labor, essentially. And she lives in a world, and, and, and the story basically takes place in China. And she doesn't want to do the same general thing. She doesn't want to be married off to some older guy and just, you know, exist in that way. So she decides she's going to study really hard to go to the Syngard, which is the like, premier military institution in general. That's kind of the base plot. So right off the bat, it does, you know, you get to know Ren, and it starts out pretty well with, you know, her really not wanting this future. And from there, because I, I was generally okay with that, but you, you kind of get the, the main bulk of the problem starts very early on with a lot of the dialogue, uh, the themes, and just the way everything is done, is this mishmash of, like, 1900s, maybe, China with, like, more ancient China with, like, current annoying teenage type writing. Uh, Rin and so many other characters talk like they're spoiled teenagers from the 2000s. It, it really takes away, and throughout, there are comments, there are phrases, there are so many things that are done that just confuse what time this is supposed to take place in and just make it seem so incredibly fake that completely, completely kept me from actually being able to get into the world. Phrases that just would not exist, people talking in ways that just don't make any sense for the setting. A really quick way to, to really pull me out. More than this is just Rin in general, who is an obnoxious character. And it's, it's not even that she's just, like, a really well-written character that I don't like. It's she's an extremely poor, poorly written character that I don't like. Rin constantly, and her personality never really makes sense. Uh, she just bounces around from one thing to the other, and we're expected to think that that's normal. Uh, with her upbringing, her immediately just being super petulant and having problems with authority and getting into fights and talking back and just thinking like talking like she deserves everything and takes everything for granted when she's literally the only person at the synagogue who is not born with a silver spoon. You expect that sort of behavior for somebody who's brought up like that, but she's brought up with nothing, having to work for everything, but suddenly she's there and she thinks she's superior to everyone, and it makes no sense. And that kind of keeps going on. Sometimes she'll be like so afraid and then it's, the fear that's driving her, then other times it's the anger that's driving her, and you never know which one it's going to be from any sort of context unless the author just tells you that, oh, this is what we're looking at now. It just simply does not work. The confused setting, the character having just no real working base really, really hurt this for me. And it goes on from there as well. So there's three parts of the book that is separated into. And part one is every school trope you can think of. It's a bunch of annoying, spoiled, western 
teenagers in the U.S., but it's just, we're supposed to just believe that this is actually, you know, in this more Chinese setting. It's how everyone talks, how everyone acts, hits, once again, all of the tropes, and it's just written like bad YA trying to be edgy. And it really <laughs> encompassed everything I don't like about YA, and I know it's not all YA, but just a lot of those things you get, the characters trying to be edgy, being annoying, uh, all of the different cliches uh, uh, to show you who's good and who's bad and how the main character feels and it just was not good it was it made me feel like a completely different book and then Kwong just kind of tries to throw in these really dark bits in there and apparently that's supposed to make this grim dark which it's not it's like why a edgelord trying to be grim dark in part one uh, and then it kind of basically stays that way with some really, really dark parts put in, but the dark parts are all just ripped out of history. So once again, really has nothing to do with necessarily the story, so to speak. It is related, but it's just kind of stolen. Uh, and like I said, there were just all these anachronisms in there. Uh, and you you see things like, you know, at one point somebody uses the term a photographic memory, even though obviously that's not a term that you would use if photographs are not a thing. You have other terms, other phrases, and later in some of the battle scenes, things that would not exist in the time playing, and occasionally you'll have sentences or little bits of exposition that are supposed to explain the disparity, and it just never really works. It's so hard to picture what's going on because it's written, there, there are scenes written where it's like, oh, do they have guns? Is, is like, there a modern society here? Oh no, we're just talking like they do, and making it very annoying to read when the setting just can never decide where it's supposed to be. And then we have part two, which kind of goes to the after the school uh, setting. And once again, just all kinds of different things that make no sense whatsoever. Uh, for part two and three though, I'm gonna have to mostly get into spoilers to really continue talking about why they just did not at all work for me. Uh, there's some things as well in part one that I want to get into that are talking spoilers, but basically all of the, before before getting into it, basically all of the, uh, all of the battle sequences, all of the people who were in charge just seemed like they had no idea what they were doing. There was no organization. Uh, there were so many passages that make no sense in any sort of command structure, even if it's one that's not working very well. All kinds of just problems with that. And as for strategy, I'll note, if you're going to rip off Sun Tzu, just call it Sun Tzu. I've read fantasy books where they don't take place in our world, and they borrow things like that. And instead, every time I hear Sun Tzu said this, it's just, it's Sun Tzu. It, even in the acknowledgement, says, yeah, straight up, it's the art of war. Yeah, it is. Just call it that. Don't try to make it seem like it's something that you've created when you're literally just saying Sun Z, which sounds kind of dumb, and then quoting The Art of War, and then having no one ever follow it for any reason, despite the fact that that's what's trained in this military academy, and it's these masters who teach strategy and fighting and yet have no clue what they're doing. <laughs> I think that's an issue you run into where you're writing as an author about things that you don't have experiences with, and I do get why some people go so hard studying, but that was one of the things I thought would be really interesting here, is that the author apparently literally has a degree in Asian history, and studied this stuff, and somehow just did such a poor job communicating it, besides the pieces that were just ripped from history. At this point, I'm going to be getting into massive spoilers for the, the whole book, from start to finish, just digging into some of the deeper things that I had really, really big problems with. And some of it was just as a book and structurally in general, and some of it was very much themes that I thought were very troubling, and I am just kind of appalled that were included. And no, that's not anything about the dark scenes coming from history, it's, it's about how the characters are written and how some of those events are handled. So at this point, if you do want to skip past the spoilers, uh, check the description. I'll have a timestamp or you can skip to kind of the recap at the end of the video But from here on out there will be very large spoilers. So first 
the the first big thing, uh, like I said, we have this just kind of trying to be edgy YA type story of book one, and that's really that's broken up. The dark thing to happen there is where Rin gets her first period and decides like this is terrible. I'm just gonna go get chemically chemically castrated. She goes and the doctor's like, yeah, I don't know why all the girls don't do this. It's great. And then she has a really hard time for like two days, which is like a page, and then it's fine. And it's just not brought up. And it's like, that was a totally normal thing to do. Now, I was expecting some sort of commentary about how, you know, gender disparity or how, you know, girls in other countries have to really suffer for that. You know, I've read lots of articles about how, you know, for example, even in today in Africa, it's girls are just expected to not go to school and get educated when they're menstruating. So, like, there's there's so much that could have been said. It's only brought up one other time in the story, and that's for her to laugh and be like, oh, yeah, you know, I got rid of the uterus, YOLO. And that's the attitude. And, and it's just like, are you kidding me? We're going to just put something in that damaging, act like it's normal, and then laugh it off later like it's a joke. And the trouble things with Rin continue. This book basically advocates for abusive relationships because... Rin, who granted grew up in a pretty crappy situation, and you'd think that would affect her in one way or another, but her behaviors never make any sense from her upbringing anyway. But she tends to specifically latch on to people in an unhealthy way. We had Nessa, who was her bully, who tried to kill her on numer numerous occasions while she was at the synagogue, and randomly they fight together and in the battle, and then not only are they like totally okay, but they become friends, and they very obviously try to do this romance, even with this person that had, you know, attacked her and tried to kill her and been very abusive to her, and it's all okay. And with Nessa too, kind of unrelated, but we have two fake-out deaths. I'm generally imagining he's alive in the next two books because of the way it was done. It really seems like he's alive, so when you're going to fake-out death characters, really makes me not care about those characters. But moving on, we then later have... Rin, who then is in love with Alton because she's got this kind of a fantasy view of him. And there's even literally, literally a line in the book where she's trying to decide if she's going to follow him with his crazy plans or follow Jing, her master, from Synagogue. And she's like, well, he was really abusive, but, you know, he always believed in me. So I'm going to go with him. Literally says that in the book. It's not, I, I saw no commentary where it's like, but that's not okay, or anybody disagrees, it's like, no. And she's just like, eh, it's okay, you know, he's abusive, he had, a, he had a tough life. And it's the kind of excuses that you see in real life, and it's such a damaging narrative to put out there. And now I know, there are people, very much in the real world, who they go through a shitty life growing up, and so then they constantly find bad people and continue that cycle of abuse, once again, that wasn't even portrayed that way. It's more so just that's apparently something that she's okay with and makes excuses for, and at no point is it put in a negative light. It's put constantly as like, no, this is fine. And that's just really sad. And I, I, I don't know if maybe there's more put in the other books, but just Rin as a character, not only being obnoxious and making no sense, also putting out all of these extremely damaging narratives to women, in my opinion. I'm not trying to be some, like, woke person and talking about, like, blah, 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 you know, this is not acceptable, this is sexist. It's just, like, it's in there, and I don't see how you could be okay with that as the reader when you're when you're reading the book. I, it, it just, with everything else, too, that still would have been a negative point, but with all of my other problems, it just adds fuel to the fire. And we constantly see, once again, with Ren, where... At one point, she's trying to follow what Jing told her about how you know she shouldn't call the power of the gods, and so she's very afraid. But then the next moment, it's like, no, nah, she's it's the anger driving her. And then she mentions like, no, I gave up on fear a long time ago. She can never decide what she wants, and it's the narrative takes it to the extreme of not making sense. You literally have on one page where she's like, ah, oh, the power of the gods was never meant for us to meddle with. We definitely shouldn't. And then the next page, she's like, no, nah, it's fine. We got this. We're going to go mess with the gods. It makes no sense at all. I have so many other little nitpicks throughout the story, and a lot of it has to do with the battles in general. 
you saw the the main kind of area they were they were trying to fight at and keep the Federation from it ended up being a ruse anyway. But the fighting really, really made no sense. And as soon as she leaves Syndergaard to join the Psyche, who are supposed to be these, like, secretive assassins that only report to the Empress, like, oh, no, they're just a group of spunky kids who have no leadership and uh, at only one point at, like, the very end ever mentioned having any sort of communication with the Empress. They just kind of do their own thing and hang out with the soldiers and everybody knows who they are and what they do. And it was presented as something completely different, but then because we need to keep this YA narrative going, it's now something like this. It's not these secret assassins. It's like, nah, they just kind of fight with everyone else now and just also do their calling the power from the god stuff. Now there is, I will say, a comment in later on about how that's not normal for them, but like, where are they getting these orders? I also am fully aware that it makes it very clear that the Empress betrayed them and for some unknown reason at this time started this whole war, but it still makes no sense. Why would she just do them there? Why not, you know, send them on missions and tell them it's important? Why would they be a part of the main war effort where it just basically makes everything messier? Didn't really make any sense. None of the orders made sense. None of these people who are supposed to be masters of war and strategy did anything that made sense. They fell for really simple bruises and just made terrible decisions. And it, it's more so even than I get they're supposed to be fighting because they don't get along all the different war leaders. But at one point, they're like, oh, there's, there were, there were uh, when, when Alton and the site go and they take out a bunch of supplies, you have Master June literally says, oh, you're an idiot. Now they're going to be desperate and they're going to attack us. How could you do this? This is, we're in so much danger now. Really shortly after, when the, it, the, the Mugenies, I think it's the, basically the Japanese in the story, are coming and uh, they, they are trying to, they come with a white flag and they're bringing a wagon full of salt and sugar. And June's like, no, nah, we're fine. We, we, we don't even need to talk to them. It's probably a trick. We got more reinforcements coming. We're totally fine. Completely different bloody set. But granted, they do put it on Alton is doing it, but you know, they, they don't like meet these people at a neutral ground. They're like, nah, come on in to the middle of this town that, that you're besieging with your wagon. Uh, they make a big show about checking the sugar to make sure it's not poison, but no, nobody looks at the salt, which actually was a bomb. And I looked it up, and saltpeter is, is not explosive on its own, so if it was just a bunch of saltpeter, which is what they end up saying it is, there would have had to have been something else. It's used in, like, fireworks or bombs, basically, to accelerate, but nobody was able to notice this at all until it's too late, and they had brought it into the middle of the town, for no reason. There were just all of these really dumb errors. I can't imagine that these people who are supposed to be masters would actually commit. And it was just so annoying seeing it go that way. As we get more into part three, it starts to be kind of seeing the bigger picture. They travel to another city and they see that everyone there was just massacred in these terrible ways. And this was another part that I would have stopped reading this book so many times I wanted to DNF it if it wasn't the buddy read. But another part, they go, they see all these terrible things, all of the ways people were murdered in horrible ways and decapitated and mutilated. They find some survivors, including a girl from Syndergaard, and after she explains how she repeatedly was raped and abused and watched other people get raped to death and explains all of these terrible things and they see all these corpses, Really, after we're ending this chapter, Rin finds out Alton's doing opium, and that somehow was worse than anything that she had seen. And, pardon my language, but are you fucking kidding me? We detail all of these atrocities, once again, pulled from reality, and then you see that your commander's on drugs, and that, that was the worst thing you had seen. I want nothing to do with this book. I... It's just, to, to handle, especially once again, something real from history, and to just be that tone deaf, and use it that way, and then act like, no, well, it's not as bad as the person that she likes using drugs, that's much worse. Horrible. And that was another point I would have quit reading this book. But I made myself continue. I will say one thing. The ending was okay. I didn't hate the ending. It was extremely predictable and obvious it was going there, but also so forced to get it there. Because 
First, you have Alton and Ren, who are going to be traveling to this prison under the mountain where apparently for thousands of years, as shamans go crazy because the two they take too much power from the gods, they're entrapped there. And it's supposed to be the prison no one could ever escape. It could never be unsealed. And they just, like, walk in. And he takes his trident and breaks some rocks and frees one of the gods. And it was just that easy. Are you kidding me? Why did nobody do this before? If that was the plan to do that, why not somebody do it at another point? If the, the enemy was really so eager to get shamans, why didn't they just go there? They knew where it was. They trapped Alden Wren, but instead of, like, freeing one of them to experiment on there, nope, we gotta capture them. And then we do this whole Nazi scientist thing, which, once again, I get what they were going for, but it didn't fit the time at all. Not to mention, they used, like, mustard gas, and then also had literally, like, cases of the plague to use for chemical weapons, and it just didn't fit. We're fighting with swords, bows and arrows. We're not fighting with chemical weapons here. It just, it, it was really ridiculous, and I didn't research when chemical weapons were first used, so if you want to go prove me wrong that, that they it, it didn't make sense, go right ahead. It really doesn't change the point. There were just so many conflicting themes, uh, conflicting characters, ideas, time periods, things that just made no sense and made the story just not work. And the ending, too, with Rin deciding that she is going to go for it and ask the Phoenix to just destroy Japan. Uh, even that, she literally, the, the very end scene, the last chapter, she's rescued. And she argues for her actions, says she didn't regret them to get like her best friend in the whole world. But then she's talking to one of the other people and suddenly like, what have I done? This is terrible. And then the book ends with like, no, I was just kidding. I totally am going to continue to do terrible things things and it's so many shifts in her character even so what you can say she's being influenced by the god i don't care it happened the whole time before she even was really calling the gods her character never made any sort of sense so i i i'm just so done and i'm so relieved to be done with this book this is one of the worst things i've read in a long time i i just still am just so glad to be done uh, I, I know many of the people who did this with the buddy read did enjoy it. I, I think maybe if you can just kind of shut off your brain and ignore everything that I've been ranting about, maybe it would be okay. I don't know. I wasn't able to do it. I had so many problems with it as a conventional book, so many problems with the message and the way things were relayed. It just, this is not for me. I will not be keeping this book. I will certainly not be reading the last two books in the series. And maybe in the future, I will give R.F. Kuang another shot as an author, but certainly we're not off to a good start for me. That concludes my rant slash review of The Poppy War. I, I know this is probably going to be controversial because even most people I talked to, and like I said, most of the other people in the buddy read really seemed to, to think this was good. It didn't work for me. This was terrible to me. I... Get books are subjective, so you may very well think I'm wrong, but there you go. There are my points. Uh, that's why I thought them. Let me know what you think in the comments. I am legitimately uh, interested to hear if you have something to refute any of the things I just said, or if you interpreted things very differently than me. It just, for me, it did not work. With that, the normal, you know, like, subscribe, all that, I'm just ready to be done with this video.